Thank you so yes. much. Uh, let me welcome Mr. Sanjeev Vichandani to, to this uh, conversation. <clears throat> um, Thanks for calling me. Great, great to have you here. Um, I have to ask you this question, Sanjeev, to start, start, the, um, start the conversation. How does it feel to be responsible for the employment choices of a majority of the audience today? <laughs> well, look, uh, I, I don't think I sort of fully comprehend that I have that responsibility or we as a company have that responsibility. But uh, look, we have done, we started off doing something very small. It was a garage kind of cottage sector kind of operation back in 97. Uh, it was running out of the second floor of my father's house uh, in Delhi. There were nine of us, um, you know, and, uh, you know, there were just two, three of us who were sort of in executive positions, the rest were data entry guys. Uh, and uh, we began by taking jobs from newspapers around the country and just putting them on, on the net free of cost. And so, look, they're small beginnings, but I think most, uh, very many big companies uh, started off very small with a small idea. So we had a small idea, we didn't have a big idea. And it sort of evolved over the years and became bigger and bigger. And we were in the right place at the right time, the internet grew, we grew along with it. Um, and, and that's how, you know, we, we, we made it forward step by step. So I don't think I had a grand plan, but um, yeah, we ended up here. Yeah, um, you, you know, um, very modest Sanjeev, but I, I do need to ask you about your beginnings. Um, when did you first know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur. I know you're not from a business family. Your father was not, or your parents were not in, in, in entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. What did you, when did you realize you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Um, so from my school days, actually. Um, so, uh, you know, all kids daydream. Uh, many adults daydream too. I daydream still, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, I was a daydreamer. Uh, yeah. see, so when I was 10 years old, I saw... Uh, uh, a Rajesh Khanna film in cinema hall independently for the first time with my friends without my parents. Which one? Being there. Do, you, do you remember which one? Uh, Hathi Mere Sathi. Yes, of course. <laughs> there was a cinema hall in Delhi called Chanakya, <laughs> just been newly built. It no yeah. longer exists, but uh, it's now a mall. Um, and uh, we used to live in the neighborhood, so you know, we went. I saw Hathi Mere Sathi and I came back completely starstruck and enamored. And I said, I will grow up and be Rajesh Khanna. Right? <laughs> of course, these are all silly pipe dreams, uh, unrealistic. After a few months, uh, you know, I maybe a year, I saw Sunil Gavaskar playing on, on a test match. I saw it on TV and I said, you know, I will be Sunil Gavaskar. But somehow yeah. when I was 12 or 13 years old, maybe two years after that, it got into my head that maybe at some point in time, uh, I want to start a company. You know, in those days, we didn't use the word entrepreneur. We mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, I my business karunga. You know, right. okay, right. I will do a business. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, somewhere... I think, I think there are kids who will do what their parents do and there are kids who simply won't. So my father was a doctor and in the government uh, and so I was clear I would not be a doctor and I would not join the government. So by a process of elimination, I came down to, you know, okay, private sector, okay, private sector, then, then what? Then, you know, I need to be independent. So for me, it was independence, create, you know, ability to create and so I'll, I'll do my own thing. And this right. sort of came along as a fuzzy goal when I was 12 or 13 years old. Uh, and uh, it was fuzzy goal. It was a fuzzy goal. And, uh, but it stayed with me. It kept coming back. By the time I was in class 11 or 12, I was clear that at some point in time in life, I should be an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, you know, as a distant goal, it's always good. But when it actually came to putting in your resignation and saying I'm quitting and walking away from yeah. a monthly salary check, yeah. uh, for a middle class uh, boy who is from a family of government servants, Thanks. It was a difficult thing to do. And I took about six to nine months of agonizing before I did that. So for me, walking away from a monthly salary check was very, very traumatic. And I think it, for the next two years, I was paralyzed with fear uh, you know, while I was doing the startup. Uh, but you know, after two years, I sort of overcame that fear and began to enjoy the independence. Understood. Great. Um, and, and I'm sure you've answered this question before, Sanjeev. So, uh, but why Nokri? How did the idea of Nokri come about? What made you sort of believe that that was the path forward for your new venture? Was it always Nokri? Did you come upon it you know, after you had started? Um, you know, help us understand sort of how that came Yeah, about. so I quit my job in 1990. I was, you know, prior to that, I'd worked five years, three years in advertising, uh, one year in consumer marketing. I was not a techie, right? right. Uh, these, were, these were like marketing jobs and I was not, I'm not a qualified engineer. I'd never programmed in my life. I mean, I had done some minor programming in IMA, but you know, that is more just to get a passing grade because I was good at it or, or loved it, right? Um, 
And, uh, you know, I quit my job in 1990. And for seven years, we drifted and did a whole bunch of small things. After that, we launched Nokri. So Nokri mm-hmm. was one more small idea in a long stream of small ideas. Got so it. I didn't have any big ideas. Right? I just didn't want to be a professional manager in a large multinational right. corporation and work my way up the hierarchy. Uh, that somehow didn't enthuse me. The prospect of that future didn't enthuse me. And I just sort of gave up that life. And I said, I would prefer to do this life. And let's see what happens. Okay. So sp- some spirit of adventure, some uh, sort of, uh, let's see what happens. You know, I've got an IMA qualification in my back pocket, so I can always, that's my insurance sure. policy. Right? Sure. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens. So yeah. now the idea of Nokri, you know, so I was in my last job at a company that's now called GlaxoSmithKline, then was called h H&M. I was the marketing guy on the brand Holics, right? And, you know, we used to sit in an open hall and I observed that every time the office copy of Business India would come in, everybody would read it from the back. Because in those days, uh, there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads at the back. Now, we were in open hall, so I could see everybody. Okay. Right? And uh, I, I found a very strange behavior. I said, I thought people, uh, you know, picked up magazines to read the editorial, the articles. Uh, and here they're just looking at the appointment ads and passing it on. They're not really interested in the articles. And then, then now they're discussing you know, the job ads among each other. And these guys are actually working for a good company, getting paid well. They're not going to apply. They're just discussing. right? Uh, and that's when I realized that, look, jobs are a high interest category of information. Even if you're not looking for a job, you will look at a job. Right. right. And when I saw the internet for the first time seven years later, uh, at, an, at an IT sort of expo, uh, mm-hmm. in Delhi. Uh, mm-hmm. I said, why not take jobs from these people around the country and put them up here and see mm-hmm. what happens? Because I was pretty confident that we'd get traffic without trying because people are interested in jobs. So just right. aggregate all the jobs in one place right. from all over the country and keep them live for a month and see what happens. Yeah. So yeah. it started with that experiment. Two data entry guys getting in 29 newspapers across the country, data structure, rehash in your own words and, yeah. and, and put in data structure and all upload right. them on the site. Yeah. And we did that and traffic began to come. And the mm. moment traffic came, uh, we could go to company and say, if you haven't advertised, you know, if you have advertised in the newspaper, we take it free. If you haven't, give it to us right. for, for payment. And right. that's how some small revenue began to come. Right. It, was, it was essentially a small cottage sector idea. Yeah. Uh, there was no, there were 14,000 internet accounts in the country then. Uh-huh. Uh, there was no dot-com valuations. There was no venture capital. There was nothing. Right. It Correct. was, uh, you know, there was no big vision. It was, uh, there, was a sales, there was a sales target. That look, if it's three years yeah. time, I can get a thousand companies to pay 500 rupees a month to put up one job. That's five lakhs a month. That's 60 lakhs a year. Uh, yeah. That is five times what the company is doing today uh, yeah. in, other, in, a, in a few other products. Uh, so if you can do that in three years, it's fantastic. And that was the extent of our ambition. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you were early in the uh, whole ecosystem. You... You know, there weren't, like you said, there weren't that many um, uh, internet startups in those days, dot-com startups, venture capitalists. So bootstrapping challenges, right? You must have faced challenges as you bootstrap the company. Um, you're also an early mover technically. Uh, so there must be technical challenges and just the infrastructure being available to consumers for, for your own company. So, um, you know, I'd like to hear a little bit about sort of that, you know, being early movers can be good and bad. And um, you know, and also being bootstrapped and being an early mover, how do you sort of, what was your sort of uh, experience in that? Well, look, uh, I think the principal problem was uh, lack of capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, what lack of capital meant was that you got to be really frugal. I wasn't taking a salary. Uh, I had got uh, other two co-founders. Uh, mm-hmm. I had taken the, all the financial risks. I had launched a company seven years ago. I got in two people to help with this project. I mm-hmm. gave them equity and not salary. I gave them a percentage of revenue every month and not a fixed mm-hmm. salary. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you you try and minimize your committed fixed outgoes, sure. and you and and you bootstrap, um, mm-hmm. and then you hope for the best. Okay. Uh, so if if your costs are low, then uh, you know you probably survive even if revenue is low. So your costs are in your control. Your revenue is never in your control. Revenue is uh, you know you hope for the best, right? You try mm-hmm. hard and hope for the best. That's revenue. Right, but yeah. costs you know what you're committing to. Yeah. So I was clear that look, costs have to be low. Yeah. Then even if revenues uh, aren't what they could be, you will still survive. So the initial target was survival. So survival was success. If you survived to meet payroll at the end of the month, you were good. 
And I remember we, we used to try and pay salaries on the 28th or 29th for the 30th, 30th, 30th every month. Right. And there were days when on the 28th, I did not know where the paycheck, paycheck was coming yeah. from. Yeah. Right. But somehow, somehow it always happened. Next couple of days, you know, enough money came in and uh, you were able to make payroll. Uh, um, you know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur as well and I bootstrap as well. So I kind of sympathize with, uh, with the experience. Uh, was there a moment for you when sort of proverbial penny dropped when you sort of felt that, look, I've hit something or my idea is, is really valuable or that some, you know, the, the bins are behind me or, or I have the right team. Um, you know, was there a moment like that for you? Yes. Uh, I, I, I would say moment, I would say there was perhaps a, a period or a phase where our mm -hmm. thinking evolved. So we launched Nokri in April 97, right? And we were doing other stuff also alongside because it was one of our four or five or six things that we were doing, you know, teaching, training, writing, uh, you know, some market research, some uh, salary survey, right? And this became a fifth thing. Let's put two guys on to see what happens, right? And uh, for the first six months, there was, uh, uh, you know, there, there was no revenue on Nokri. It was just ads some newspapers. But what yes. was happening was that when people came to the site, they applied for those jobs. In those days, most people didn't have email. Most HR managers did not have email. So the, the right. appointment ads did not have email IDs. So you were sending right. hard copies by fax or by, by courier of your application and you wrote a covering letter. Uh -huh. So when people began to apply, they would say, I saw your job on Nokri. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and so the HR community began to hear about us without us reaching out to them. Because mm -hmm. in the covering letters of the applicants, uh, the, enough of them said Nokri. Yeah. So they got to know about us. About six months later, we got a call uh, from a guy who said, I'm a small auto component manufacturer in Pune, medium size, whatever. I forget the guy's name and I forget his company's name. He was our first big client. I, and I forget his right. name. He's a, he's a travesty. Right. But, uh, you know, you know, I've got six jobs uh, that are not advertised. You have taken my jobs from newspapers in the past, but I've got six that are not advertised. Can I, if I send them to you, will you put them up? And, you know, uh, look, uh, it, it was, in those days, there was an eight-year waiting list for a telephone. So there was only one phone in the office. It was my desk. So I, was, I used to pick up all the phones. Right. Okay. Uh, and the office anyway was only 2,000 square feet. So it was not a big office. Right. Okay. And so I had picked up the phone. And this was about 6 yeah. p.m. Right. And I sort of blurted out, you know, uh, yes, sir, but you have to pay. I said, how much? Mm -hmm. Now, I'd not thought it through. <laughs> Somehow I blurted out 350 rupees huh. per job. Right. right? And uh, without thinking. And that became the price for the Nokri single job listing for the next 10 years. Wow. Okay, so much, so much for pricing strategy <laughs> and all your MBA education, all that, right? Uh, okay. okay, anyway, so this guy sent the check. And that's when I realized, hey, maybe we're onto something. Let me just try it. Mm -hmm. And we took out all the jobs we put up in the last six months mm -hmm. and pulled out the names of the companies, the type, the designation of the advertiser, the address, pin code, city, all that. And we sent right. them all a letter. 3,000 names. And we sent them all a letter saying, look, this is the internet. This is Nokri. This is the format. Send us your jobs. This is the price. Right. And so we, so money began to come in by direct mail. Yeah. People would send the jobs along with the check. Correct. Right. And that sort of kind of chugged along. And uh, in the first, so we launched in April 97. So September 97 to March 98, we did two and a half lakhs. The mm -hmm. next year we did 18 lakhs. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I had never seen a, uh, anything jump. Now, this is a small numbers today, but, uh, you know, for us, it was a big number. Correct. Right? Uh, this is, you know, I had never seen anything jump 7x in one year, right. even of a small base. Correct. Right. Uh, and that's when I said, you know, we may be onto something big. So around the middle of 98, I said, let's just stop doing everything else and focus all resources on this. We are now an internet company. Right. And it wasn't a one day thing. It was a three week thing, you know, one, one month thing. But around that period, I said, you know, I suspect we have stumbled upon a big idea. Yeah. By accident. God. Huh. So, customer, so many experiments, one worked out. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, customer mind share, customer feedback, right? Really, you really saw the customers react to the, to the uh, sort of uh, opportunity you're presenting in front of them. And hopefully I think some of the entrepreneurs today in the audience will also take that to heart on sort of how uh, key it is to really get to understand what the customer is looking for. Um, I, I did want to move on to... I mean, I know I have several questions for you, Sanjeev, but I want to move on to the next phase in sort of um, your your career is as an investor. I did want to spend a couple of time, you know, minutes on that as well. I know we, we only have 30 minutes today. Um, but uh, from an entrepreneur operator to an investor, 
Um, I'd love to hear your thought process on how and why you made that decision to focus your energies in, uh, on more than just the operations of what was obviously very, very successful, very large, uh, well-growing company as well. And sort of what, what, what was in your mind and sort of what made you do that? Well, you know, um, first of all, uh, very fortunate to have uh, senior colleagues um, and, and, you know, sort of partners who uh, were there to take up the mantle should I ever have to step aside. Right, so we weren't short of management bandwidth at the top. Right, mm -hmm. uh, we done, I think that's a good job of putting a senior team together and then down the line. Okay, yeah. What that meant was post the IPO. So during the IPO process for a year before that, you no, know, I had to sort of, uh, I was called the CEO, but effectively I could stop being the CEO, except for getting the IPO through. That took about eleven months. Got it. During that time, Hitesh Oberoi, who was then the CEO, yeah, sort of he took he stepped up to the plate and he did handle everything. So when the IPO was over, I kind of figured that, listen, although I'm called the CEO, you know, I don't need to be the CEO. Yeah. Right? Hitesh is ready. Okay. Yeah. So this is, it took us about, I think, three, four years to sort of uh, actually do that. But yeah. that is in, in my head and Hitesh was also ready and, you know, we were discussing it. And uh, so, it, and we had this money sloshing around in the bank and we were profitable. The IPO money, yeah. right? And we, yeah. we were sort of making money every month, every quarter. Yeah. So we said, what do we do with this capital, uh, yeah. right? And it may be a good idea to go out and do some, acquire something. But when we went out, we figured that there's nothing to acquire and whatever there is, is perhaps too expensive. We would never buy at that price. Correct. And then we realized that, look, there are a whole bunch of uh, people trying to do stuff. Uh, they're super smart and bright. We can't do all those things. We don't have all those ideas. We don't have the leadership bandwidth and they'll never come and work for us. So why don't we back them and yeah. see where that goes? And uh, at that time, there was some venture capital, but not the kind of venture capital there is today in India. So they, that seemed to be an underserved segment as far as capital is concerned. Right. Uh, so we, or we put our toes in the water. And in 2007, a year after the IPO, we sort of put a small sum of money in one company, then second company, third company, uh, mm -hmm. from a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, I sort of stepped aside as CEO and began to do this full time. So once again, like Nokri, started off with a small cottage sector activity. Uh, Figuring it, figuring it out as we went along. I had, you know, one and a half people. Right. Uh, even now, there are only six people, um, you know, right. okay. uh, in, wow. the, in the investing team. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we do this. Great. Okay. Um, you know, do you look at startups in, you know, do you weigh your own experience as an entrepreneur when you look at startups and sort of what values so you we have? A notion. We, we have a few notions on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who to back, what to back, what to look for. We aren't mm -hmm. always right, and we miss some good ones. So if you look at our anti list, uh, some really big home runs we've missed. Sure. But that's fine, you know. As long as the ones you do are okay enough for them, you know, we're all right. But uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, if I tell you the ones I've missed, uh, you know, you'll see yeah, what a lousy <laughs> investor you are, Sanjeev. <laughs> <laughs> no, but is there is there a thesis that uh, that you look at? Is it really yeah? A so one, one back? thing is we like to see market? is yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, we like to see some evidence of natural traction that this thing has got legs and uh, without spending on marketing, it's kind of spreading, right? Which means it's probably hitting a hot button, solving an unsolved problem. Uh, you know, we like to talk to the customers. We, one important question we ask is, where did you get this idea from? Your idea can't say Aya. right. So we, we, get a, we get a good sense of the, how compelling the value prop is, right? Uh, obviously team is important. Uh, but the third thing we look at is, look, can this thing ever make money? Mm -hmm. We are great believers in revenue, profit, cash flow. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and uh, because I believe in the long run, you'll be valued of a profit multiple. Correct. So if we can't figure out how this company could make profit ever, right? right we, we tend to stay away. Right. Right. Uh, you know, uh, and then we go in and we stay for a long time. So for example, uh, in, uh, Policy Bazaar, we invested first in 2008. We continue to invest and we invested last in 2019. Now, you can do that off the balance sheet. Sure. You can't do it in a VC fund. You can't, you can't do it in the fund, yeah. Because you've got, a, you've got an exit time horizon. Correct. But one thing I've realized is that uh, if you have the luxury of being really patient in India, yeah. You know, at the end of the day in Zomato, uh, we went in 2010, 2021, 11 years later, we're still in there. And, you know, had we run a seven, eight year, nine year fund, we would have probably wanted to exit by 2016. Right, and, but right. a lot of our value creation and uh, appreciation has come in the last three years. Right. And we would have missed right. that. 
So in India, you got to be really patient. In my opinion. Mm. Got it. Right now, do you did you do you enjoy being an investor more than an operator, or is not it for the first two three years? Your brain? Not for the first two three years. You know, uh, you know, I was CEO, and what I said would get done, right? Yeah. Uh, and when you're investing behind uh, entrepreneurs, it took me two years right. to understand that listen, people become entrepreneurs with, not because they're looking for a new boss, right. right? So you know, you can suggest, but maybe they'll do two out of ten things you say, uh, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to live with that. Right. Yeah. So, as opposed to telling people what we're expecting them to follow, you right. got to nudge and suggest, and right. then hope for the best. <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, because good entrepreneurs, see, 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 good entrepreneurs uh, will almost always march to the beat of their own drummer. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, the question yeah. is, can you say something, and if the penny drops, he'll do it, or he or she will do it. If the penny doesn't yeah. drop, he won't do it. Yeah. 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 Agree. Um, I know we have only five minutes left, Sanjeev. So I'm gonna, I did want to ask you some questions about Sanjeev himself. So, um, what, what, uh, outside of work, outside of sort of all the stuff that you've done on your career, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, direction, what else interests you? What, what do you do to let your hair down? What are the hobbies interests you have? I mean, we'd like to hear sort of what Sanjeev does when he's not working. Uh, well, okay. The fact is. I'm usually working. Okay, no, but, but you know, but but having said that, look, I I, I read a bit. I I I, sure. I, I, I used to travel. Uh, you know, and now uh-huh. of course travel is out. Um, and yeah. uh, I love actually working on with entrepreneurs and startups, whether or not I'm investing. Correct. Because from the young people I meet, I get ideas and energy, and keeps me young, right. and keeps me to problem solving. I'm uh, interested in supporting a few institutions, uh, right. and therefore I do some financial be there. Um, you know, uh, largely in the area of education, okay, whether it's Ashoka University, whether it's, you know, my school, sure. my college, my business school, any other thing. Sure, so there's sure. some financial we do uh, sure. and I get involved in some of that, um, right. but largely in the education space. Right, right. I have to give a shout out, by the way, now that you're talking about sort of give back, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the Partition Archives. I know you're a supporter of that cause. Yes, um, as I am as well, and I'm you know you know deeply committed to that cause as well. So so thank you for supporting that cause. Thank you. Um, if you you know uh, sort of more of a lighthearted question, if you had to invite one person for dinner uh, anywhere in the world, somebody who everybody would know here, who would it be, and why? You know, would you uh, I, I you know I could say anybody. I could say Shah Rukh Khan. I could say Amitabh Bachchan. I could say you know. Uh, I could say I, I you know I could say something deliberate, but you know what? I, I'd really like to talk to the guy who gave us our first check in Nokri. I don't uh-huh. know who he is, I've forgotten the name of the company, uh, but he started the ball rolling and he gave us our first check proactively, inbound interest. And uh, uh, you know, and that's what said, okay, now it's time to start earning revenue. But I'd like to uh-huh. I'd like to meet that guy. Uh, okay, great. Now maybe we can get the word out and, and see if that if that person can can reach out. Um uh, I, I Time-wise, I think I just wanted to sort of um, give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about the impact you've had. And if it's a tough question, it's a big question. Um, you know, the theme of our event is the multiplier effect. And I think for you, your multiplier effect has been in so many different ways as an entrepreneur, uh, for your investors, for your employees, um, for, the, for the people who are looking for jobs, honestly, right? And, and so many other things. So I'd love to hear sort of your thought on um, the multiplier effect and sort of how you view it you know, in, in your uh, sort of lens. Well, look, I think uh, doing stuff that has uh, impact beyond what you do is really important because what you do is important. But mm-hmm. the, India make out, right? he, the government uh, set up five IITs. Right. Uh, their graduates were in demand and succeeded and the demand for admission to IITs exceeded the number of seats pretty quickly. And, and that led to 4,000 engineering colleges coming up all over India, right? right. Uh, and if you look at the Indian IT sector, uh, you know, that has been built not by the IIT, it has been built by all the engineers because mm-hmm. you need a couple of few million people working there, right? Yeah. And it is the yeah. IT sector that has led to India being able to take advantage of the tech opportunity today beyond right. IT services, right? Right. Uh, where you're talking about the internet, uh, apps, tech, product companies, you know, and so on, right? Uh, and that's what is creating all this wealth, value, market cap, uh, job creation, all of that. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, that is a multiplier effect. Sure. Five IITs, 
4,000 Indian colleges. It took sure. 50 years, but it happened. Sure. Right? Yeah. Uh, likewise for business schools. Mm -hmm. Two IMs, then the third one, and then there are 3,000 business schools. Okay? Sure. Uh, we want to do that for Ashoka. One mm -hmm. liberal arts college can make it work. Will others copy you? And you should be open to be copied and encourage copying. Right. Because India needs maybe 100 Ashokas, 1,000 Ashokas. Correct. Likewise, one company, uh, InfoEdge, yeah. uh, you know, it grew, yeah, it went yeah. public. Correct. It, it sort of showed others that it, if it can be done. Sure. Invest in some. Like the amount of policies that have worked out well, it shows others it can be done. I think that's right. important. So right. India, in what, with 1.4 billion people, 1.3 billion people, uh, you know, no, you need you need models that will succeed and then inspire others to do similar things. Or follow a similar path. I think that's really important. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. I know we have one minute left. I wanted to give you uh, maybe 60 seconds if you have some final takeaways. Uh, the audience today is about 2,000 people. We have a lot of young entrepreneurs. Uh, there is a lot of alumni from some of the, uh, the engineering and management schools that we have here. We have some faculty from these universities as well. So it's a broad audience and obviously some investors as well. Uh, I wanted you to take 60 seconds to think, you know, if you had any takeaway, especially for the young entrepreneurs. Especially yeah, for the yeah. guys so I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say one thing. That for the people who are starting out as entrepreneurs and have not got funding, right? Just remember that the customer's money is more important than the investor's money, right? Because if right. you're getting the customer's money and you're getting it repeatedly from the same customer at a price that's higher than your cost, then chances are you have a viable company so long as you get enough customers, right? And if you are getting the customer's money on these terms, the investor's money will almost certainly follow because investors love to invest behind customers who are getting, uh, behind companies who are getting their customer's money. But if you get the investor's money first, it does not necessarily mean the customer's money will follow. Because the customer right. is unforgiving. The customer will only give you money a second time right. if you deliver the first time. That means your right. stuff is working. But getting the investor's money is about perhaps impressing two, three people across the table with your PowerPoint. And that could be just the arbitrary judgment of those three people that, you know, this, this thing sure. is worth making. Sure. So therefore, I would say focus on getting the customer's money first before, before trying to get the investor's money. Great. No, that's terrific advice. Um, it's a bit of a privilege, Sanjeev, to have a few minutes of your time to speak with us and our Thank team. Thank you so much um, for inviting me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the time and, and look forward to, uh, to learning more from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.